all of a sudden things that were so normal become extraordinary when you realize that I might not have been doing this. I had gone to work like a normal day. I take my dog. I went to exercise. Coming back from that, it was about 10.30. I was um, scheduled to meet my manager. So we went across the street and uh, we're drinking coffee. And then that's all I remember. Shots fired. Requesting EMT immediately. I got a bullet in the chest. Dr. Chase, who happened to be coming out of Urban Fair, saw me bleeding out. And he did what he could to stem the, the blood loss. The paramedics who came, they were the advanced life transport guys. This is a dire situation and, and patients often don't survive. By the time I arrived in the trauma bay, the trauma resuscitation was in full effect. Some of the emergency physicians were putting down a breathing tube. Other physicians and nurses were working on getting intravenous lines in, but he continued to be pulseless. This is where the rest of the team really made a big difference. The other physicians, my fellow, we had residents there, we had emergency medicine and anesthesia, uh, respiratory therapy and emergency physicians and nurses, and they were working furiously to get blood into his intravascular system. But the heart was empty, empty, empty. And after a few minutes of this work, um, resuscitating with blood products, trying to stop bleeding on the right side of the chest, doing compressions on the heart with our two hands, we noticed that the heart started to beat just one beat, one contraction, and then nothing. But it contracted again a second time, and then a third time, and a fourth time. It started to contract faster, it started to fill, and it started to move blood forward. To our amazement, it just kept getting stronger and stronger. We felt he was stable enough to move up to the operating room, which we did. And from there, the ICU was already aware and waiting for him. He was still very unstable. We just didn't know which direction things would go. And then we continued to watch him for the next few days. I woke up. My wife is standing over me going, you're okay, you're in the hospital, but you've been shot. I realized how lucky I was, and they, they brought me back to life. I think I had a very strong desire to live. I had a very strong desire to see my son grow up and to spend more time with my wife and my family. Each person, each employee of this hospital was so important in my husband's uh, health and recovery. They did everything and more to bring Paul back to life. If we didn't have some of the equipment that we did, for instance, uh, ultrasound, um, high resolution CT scanning, um, we couldn't push into areas that we we haven't been in before. You know, the, the beautiful thing about a new piece of equipment in this hospital is not only might it help me, but then it's here to help lots of other people. And the, the skill of the care that I must have received because I could be talking to you from a wheelchair and I'm not, and I'm able to ride my bike and go for a bike ride with my son. To be able to, to look forward to that, that's, um, 
just to be able to look forward to that, to have that ability to... Uh, I didn't have it and it was given back to me. I think when you have, uh, uh, you know, this commitment, passion, expertise, a great team, and you're supported with the best technology and the best equipment, um, you can sometimes uh, uh, make a miracle happen. Mm -hmm.